Good morning, Crossroads. It is really good to be here with you all. People are still shuffling in. I think the, the winter cold is making it a bit harder for everybody to get out of bed. I know I have that struggle. It's good to have you here this morning as we wish the Lord together. And just a big welcome to everybody watching online as well. It's good to have you here. We're going to worship the Lord together, and um, I want to encourage you to stand with the band. Nice big band this morning. Uh, it's going to be good. Let's, uh, let's worship the Lord together. Will you join us in worship as we enjoy God's love that endures forever? Forever God is faithful. Just a couple of announcements and a couple of good news stories. I'm not sure if I'm standing in the right place. Anyway, um, great good news story from this last week. I'm not sure if it wasn't mentioned last week. I was not here. But we got a van and something we've been praying for for the last few weeks. And it has finally happened. It's a little blue wonder. Um, and it's going to help our church amazingly just to get stuff here and back and help us a lot with just setting up on a Sunday. Then 
a couple of great things are happening this Christmas. Um, we've got an initiative called Christmas in a Box. So as a church, we love serving. We love serving our community. So there should be a slide up there. All the information is on our website. So we're going to do be collecting quite a few things for different initiatives. So the one initiative is called the Middenhof, which is a girls' shelter, a care home for girls who come from difficult situations who just don't have a home. And this place... And this place really just tries to give them some st stable foundation, professional help to get them onto their feet and a new fresh start at life. So we're going to be doing something for Christmas for them, giving them gift packages and also making them a Christmas brunch. So you can sign up to help with the brunch. You can just bring a gift for them as well. You can sign up for these things on the website. We will also be working with um, Haagse Helpers, which we will be giving. Um, so the Haagse Helpers has a network of people without network. So it's people who are isolated alone. And they are doing a few things during December for them. But what we will be doing is we'll be collecting things to distribute in January. So on the website, it's titled Winter Boxes. Um, so just to give these people something fresh to inspire them um, and lift up them in these dark days that are ahead of us. Then one more thing we are doing as well is directed more for the kids. We're partnering with Crossroads Amsterdam as an initiative for um, refugee children that are here in the Netherlands. So they're collecting about a thousand, they're aiming to collect a thousand box, thousand boxes. And we're going to do our contribution towards that as well. So if you have your kids and they would like to fill in a box for other kids, the information is on the website and get them to do that. That would be really, really great. Then also Christmas, obviously we're having a Christmas service. So if you're around, please join us Sunday. Christmas is on a Sunday. At 11 here, we'll have a fantastic Christmas service. The information should be on the website soon as well. Um, it's going to be fantastic. Then last thing, as always, what we do here as a church is driven by gifts. And as always, we communicate that, and it's so biblically true, is that when we give to church or to anything, we give so as a sign of gratitude, as a sign of worship. And you can give so. The QR code is up here. It should be at the connect point after the service as well. The details, as always, are on our website. And then I want to invite Anna Camille to come and pray for us, and pray for the service, and then we'll continue worshiping. Good morning, Crossroads. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for you, for who you are. You are amazing. You are great. You are wonderful. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. Thank you, God, that we could wake up this morning and think that and know that you are with us, that you're always with us. Your mercies are new every morning, God, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you for the service this morning. Thank you for new people joining Crossroads this morning, that your word will also bless them, God, and it will also uh, be supportive and healing uh, for people who need it, God. We thank you for different families, for individuals, who uh, are waiting for test results or receive them, Lord, favorable or not, God. We thank you that you are with them, that you are with everyone, God. Thank you, God, that your, your hands are stretched open, Lord, to hug us, Lord, to say, we, I listen. I listen to you. I know what you're going through. And thank you for those words, God. Thank you, God, that whatever we, yeah, is happening, God, that we can come to you. I also want to pray, God, for all the initiatives that Alan just mentioned, God, that um, you will stir our hearts, Lord, and um, speak to us, Lord, so we can be involved, Lord, in this in these initiatives, God. I pray, Lord, that for each gift, God, and every uh, time or effort that we put in this, Lord, will be purposeful, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the people that will be blessed by these initiatives, God. Thank you that it is purposeful, Lord. Thank you for all the, yeah, the people who, who, who look at others, Lord, to help them, Lord. Bless them, God. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you, God, also for all the Christmas pre preparations that are coming. I would like to thank you for the children, for the youth, God, as we're going through a time of Advent, God, that you remind us every day that it's all about you, God. Thank you, God, again and again. We're just grateful for so many things. Also, the van, Lord, this is amazing. Thank you also for all the preparations, God, and that are for, for anything that is coming, God. There are families that are also traveling to see their families during Christmas, Lord, that they will also have a blessed time. 
And thank you also for people who are healing, who had surgeries, God. Thank you that they are continued to heal, God. And um, I also want to thank you for our financial gifts to you, God, um, our time, our effort. Um, God, thank you, Lord, for what you have given us. You have given us finances, God, so that we can give back to you, God. And uh, thank you, Lord, that it's, uh, it's blessed and um, enough, Lord, to cover everything uh, for the end year, God. And I want to thank you for that because you make it possible for us to give back to you, God. And thank you for that. Lord, we praise you. We adore you. I can't say that enough. And uh, thank you also for the worship this morning. Um, thank you, God, that we can celebrate you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's bless the Lord for everything he gave us. Will you stand and worship with us?
actually be meaningful. I think there's a journey that needs to be taken. There's a journey that needs to be um, walked. There's a road that needs to be taken in order to arrive at Christmas. And this Advent road is a very specific kind of a road. It's a very specific kind of journey that you need to kind of go on in order to arrive at Christmas. And Advent invites us to actually consider a very particular part of our lives. It invites us to actually look at those areas of our lives which are less than ideal. Those areas of our lives where we understand that life did not turn out the way we expected it to turn out. To look at those parts of our lives and those relationships that did not turn out the way they started. To look at our families and to look at our children and to look at everything we have, everything we own, and to be maybe for the first time in our lives honest and say that they are not the way that we thought that it ought to be. You see, Advent invites us to actually deal with that very particular part of our lives, to deal with the less than ideal part of who we are and what we are in this world. Because if we are able to do that, then I think Christmas makes sense. If you actually take that road and you walk it all the way to its end, you will see what Christmas truly is all about. So Advent today, Crossroads, is an invitation. It's an invitation to come and to look into that area of our lives, area that is, again, Less than ideal, less than that what you have imagined or that you thought that it should be. And we're going to do this by actually listening to the words of Psalm 108. And our hope from the teaching team and also 107. Thank you, Bob. (laughs) The hope is, is that as we listen to the words of Psalm 107, that we will also discover something of Advent in it. That as we listen to the words of Psalm 107, that we will hear our own longing, that we will recognize something of what Advent actually is all about and what Advent is inviting us as people of God, as a church, to actually deal with. Before I read the word, let me just say a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we open your word to read, Father, we are able to do this because it is you who have given us yourself already in Jesus Christ. Father, as we listen to your word, we pray for hearts and minds. We pray for ears to hear, for hearts to receive all that you have for us in and through your word. Father, we also pray that the word that we read And the word that we hear this morning, may it do its work and may it not go unfinished in us. In your name we pray. Amen. Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands from the east and the west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them to a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love, 
and his wonderful deeds for men, for he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts to bars of iron. This is the word of the Lord. Now, there are two kinds of people that the psalm so far addresses. Actually, there are five kinds, but I'm going to introduce you to two kinds of people. And maybe you will recognize something of your own life, of your own lives in their lives. And the first ones are the people who are lost, who are lost in the, the desert. And they are lost and they are thirsty and hungry. And there's something about our own lives where we feel also at times lost, thirsty, and hungry. You see, there are two journeys that we usually take as human beings. The first journey is away from home. And as we walk away from home, we go out into the world in order to build our lives, in order to make something of ourselves. And that is good. It is the first journey away from home that we go on. And we go and again, we build our lives, we, we build our homes, we build our family, we build our career, we build everything that we are. And at a certain point, we realize that this journey from away from home is actually a journey into a maze, into a labyrinth. And what we find is that we bump into, this, into these walls. And at a certain point, we realize that by walking this labyrinth of life far away from home, we understand that somehow we are lost. You see, we have had all the food, we have, we have drank all the drink, we have had all the pleasures that everything has to give, and yet we remain thirsty and hungry and lost. It is there that we need to learn to cry out to the Lord. The second journey, usually, it's a much more searching kind of journey. The first journey is the journey away from home, and the second journey that we take is towards home. It is the journey of trying to find and seek and a place to be where we can put our backs down, the place where we can hang our head, the place where we can finally say, yes, now I am at home. And on that road towards home, we again get lost. We get lost on the, all the side tracks. We get lost and we always, whenever, wherever we arrive in life, we still long for something more. We still long for a place where we can be truly at home, truly satisfied, not hungry anymore, not thirsty anymore. So those are the first category of people, those who are lost in life. Those who have lost their way in life. Advent invites us to consider in all the ways that we are lost. In all the ways that life did not turn out to be what it should be. Now the second category of people are the ones who are chained, who are stuck in life. You see, there's, a, there's life to be had out there when we go out and we build a life for ourselves. But the second kind of people are the ones who are chained to their gloom, to their maybe inner darkness. There's not only a journey for us in life out there, but there's also an inner journey that we go on. And in our inner journey, we also arrive maybe to a place where we are stuck, where we are bound to the limitations of ourselves, to who we are and what we are in this world. And being bound to ourselves, having ignored the words of the Lord, having ignored the counsel of God, all that there is left is just hard labor, difficult work, may it be inner or outer work. You see, there are those who are Lost, and then there are those who are trapped. Advent is inviting us to consider our lives in all the ways that we are also trapped. In all the ways that we are maybe trapped in ourselves, bound to ourselves and unable to fix ourselves. 
So what are we to do? What is the Advent invitation this morning? And it is two times over, is repeated like a refrain, like a chorus of a song. And they cried out to the Lord. You see, Advent is an invitation to learn to cry to the Lord. Advent is inviting us to consider the limitations of our own lives. When we have come to the end of ourselves, we have tried everything. We have done everything possible in this world. We have promised that we're going to do better. We have promised that that we're not going to do that one thing ever again. And yet we come to the end of ourselves and we are stuck and we are bound to ourselves. So what are we to do? What is Advent actually inviting us to do? It's inviting us to actually cry to the Lord. Is inviting us to lift our hands and say, Lord, I've come to the end of myself. I really do not know what to do anymore. You see, in a secular world that we live in, the invitation usually is to find something in yourself, to somehow find a solution to the questions of life within yourself, only for you to find nothing there. In this secular world, it is good to be able to look beyond yourself. It's good to look beyond myself, to actually look to God and say, Lord, I've arrived to the end of myself, this Advent. I've arrived at the end of myself. Lord, help me. You see, this is how Christmas becomes meaningful again in our lives you see if christmas is only about the family it's only about the endless food that we are able to eat or the shopping that we are able to do and we always end up hungry and thirsty and wanting more then christmas if it's just another reason for us to shop then is meaningless you see christmas when we find christmas after advent after a time of actually considering in all the ways that we need someone outside of ourselves to actually help us and save us from ourselves, I think Christmas can truly become meaningful again in our lives. See, this is what Psalm 107 is actually inviting us to do. It invites us to consider in all the ways that we are stuck that we are bound, that we are lost. And in that, not to get discouraged, but to actually look to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help us. Lord, help my family. Help my friends. Help, because we have come to the end of ourselves. I imagine that this is the moment when you think, Sossi Bennett, this is not why I came this morning to church. I did not come for you to kind of just rain on me all your dark ideas and thoughts. I've come to be picked up and to be, to help me somehow. At times we need to read scripture for what it is, brothers and sisters. But the psalm starts off with a very important sentence. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. At the end of ourselves, as we are learning to cry to the Lord, it is a good spiritual habit for us to actually be also thankful. To be thankful in all the ways that we actually have a life. In all the ways that we are learning to look to the Lord. In all the ways that we are Longing for Christmas, for salvation to come into our lives. You see, Advent prepares our eyes to look forward to salvation in Christ. It trains our mouth to sing about salvation in Christ. It trains our ears to look and to hear the salvation in Christ. It prepares our hearts 
to long for salvation in Christ. So what do we do in the meantime? What do we do between now and December 25th? What do we do in the meantime as we are waiting in our distress? You see, we live in a world where we don't know what to do with the meantime. Usually when we have to wait in the doctor's office for our appointment to start. When we have to wait at the kid's swimming lesson. When we have to wait for a bus or a train. While we are sitting on a train. While we are on the toilet. All those areas that we are waiting, usually we fill it up with that little thing that we have in our pockets. We don't know how to wait anymore. We don't know how to wait on the Lord anymore. Advent is teaching us, is inviting us to wait on the Savior to come in our lives. It invites us to, to, to wait for the light of God to light up the darkness that is without and within ourselves. Advent is inviting us for us to be actually patient with ourselves and with our lives. To be patient with God, for Him to truly come and save us from our distress. Because His promise that He will do it. What we see also in the psalm that as people cry out to the Lord, He comes and He saves them. And he does not just save them in a very generic way, but he answers their cry in very specific ways. That those who are lost find a home. That those who are stuck, they find freedom in God. You see, if you have this morning, maybe the only thing you have, or maybe it's a silent prayer, maybe just an outstretched psalm, Lord, I've come to the end of myself, please help. His answer is not just a generic answer. His answer is a very tailored made, is a concrete answer to your distress. My hope for this season for us, Crossroads, as we prepare our hearts and our minds, as we prepare for us to, as we walk the journey towards Christmas, as we are going towards Christmas, for us, to learn one thing, and that one thing is to learn to cry to the Lord. It's for us to know where to look for help and for salvation. Not that we have not tried all the other ways. Not that we have not tried to save ourselves. But having come to the end of ourselves actually be honest and to cry to God and say, Lord, help us. Lord, help me. This is the Advent invitation this morning, brothers and sisters. Let me pray for us. The band can come up. Heavenly Father, as we have opened your word, Father, it confronts us with our own lostness. It confronts us with us being stuck at times within ourselves in life. And Lord, your word not only gives us a diagnosis of ourselves, but it also teaches us to cry. Lord, I pray by your spirit that you teach us how to cry out to you. Lord, help us. As we await your light, as we await your salvation. Father, I pray that you give us patience, that you give us longing hearts for you, that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear, for you to come and to save us again. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please stand as we continue to worship.
What a beautiful invitation this morning from Sazi and even from the song to, to cry out to this God who, who loves us so, so much and will cross everything to be reunited with us or to make a way for us to be in a relationship with him. There's prayer here inside the music room if you want to cry out with someone and share what is burdening you at this moment. At the back, there's a connect point for anybody that's near you who wants to find out a bit more about Crossroads. Please come and chat with us. We would love to get you connected, get you plugged in. Also, right at the back uh, is a table with a couple of QR codes to sign up for our Christmas in a Box events. Please, please consider giving something for somebody in need this Christmas. And then lastly, um, there's two coffee tables at the back, one on the right, one on the left. We're trying something new. Um, so you don't have to queue in this long queue. You can get a coffee nice and quickly. But make sure you connect and have a conversation with somebody. So I want to invite you to these next steps, and then I want to invite Sazi to come and bless us. Please remain standing as I <clears throat> pronounce uh, the blessing. For all those who are lost and stuck, May the love of the Father, the grace of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence of His Holy Spirit find you and be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Crossroads, you are blessed. Mm -hmm.